Hello again, welcome to another edition of the Real Ale Guide. Again, we're with Jim, the head brewer, the Wells and Youngs. Hello. Nice Hi. to meet you again. Uh, we're in the control room, um, which is a bit of a mystery to me, so I'm going to hand over to Jim, and he's going to explain everything that goes on in this wonderful room. <laughs> well, I hope you've got an extended double header issue here, so I it will yeah. take me a little bit of time. Absolutely. Uh, but this is, I guess, what we would call the kitchen of the brewery. So okay. it's where the process starts. It's where we put the recipe uh, into action. We take our ingredients, our raw materials, and we prep them, and we mix them, and we cook them. Right. So uh, to do that, uh, over behind us uh, is a table where you can see wow. a range of our raw materials. Look at this. Um, malted barley start. is our uh, primary material, and all of our beers um, have malted barley. Has it got um, much of a smell? Or can I pick some yeah, up? Yeah, that, that's um, hot materials. But if you if you take just a, a few grains of malt and crunch them, okay. Um, taste of cereal and biscuit and yeah, yeah. malt. <laughs> Surprisingly yeah. enough, oval teen, that sort of taste. Absolutely. An even nicer one is what we call crystal malt. Okay. Um, which is added to the ales, predominantly for colour and flavour, has a slightly different manufacturing process to standard malt, and it gives a really good toffee and uh, confectionery taste. Yes. And. Um, very pleasant for a cereal. That's nice. Mm. It gives a little burns, like a burn aftertaste going on there. Very good constituent for bitters and uh, pale ales. Yeah. Um, last one on the right is chocolate malt. Okay. I wouldn't recommend that you have more than one or two grains of that. Okay. Um, this is quite highly roasted uh, and is given again. Uh, a dark colour to the beer. We use it in stout. And though it's called chocolate malt, it doesn't really taste of confectionery chocolate. Right. Chocolate comes more towards the colour than the taste. I understand. Mm. And that's coffee. Coffee, yep, yeah, a little bit of carbon. Um, and I think if you do imagine hard, you can probably get a little bit of dark, bitter chocolate yes. on the back of it. Right at the back, yeah. 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 And um, when you're creating a beer with a novel flavour like chocolate stout, I think it's quite important that any flavour you introduce to it is in sympathy with the beer, so you don't want it to be in conflict. So if you're going to produce a banana beer, or an apple beer, or a chocolate beer, yeah. the base beer has to have that flavour naturally, and then you just enhance it a bit. Right. That makes the drinkability uh, maintain and stay there uh, without there being flavours kind of fighting each other. And it's all about balance, and it's the same when you're pairing beer with food. You want flavours that are in sympathy uh, and not trying to outdo one another or trump one another. So if you have a light tasting food, you don't want a strong tasting beer and vice versa. Right. So those are basic raw material ingredients. Um, the malted barley is crushed in a mill yeah. to make grist. Yeah. I've never quite understood why it's grist to the mill. I always thought it's grist from the mill, but there we go. <laughs> Must be a Yorkshire uh, statement. Um, and for some of our lagers, we're using uh, maize grits and rice. I've tasted the Keelan in uh, one of your, your pubs. It tasted fantastic. It was crisp, clean, um, the bubbles were fine again. And I get it's one of them drinks which you can have cold. Mm -hmm. It tastes very, very good cold. It's probably different from any other lag I've ever tasted. Is okay. that because it's proved a rice? Um, partly that. I think it's probably more to do uh, with the brewing process where uh, we only take the first 
uh, pressings from the materials. We don't go through a process called sparging, where we wash through the last bits. Um, it's quite an expensive process because we throw a lot away. Right. Um, but if you can uh, imagine something like um, olives or fruit being pressed and the first juices that come off, if you just took that away and packaged that as against squeezing the last little bit and then flushing through with hot water, yeah. that's the difference between Kirin and a normal beer. We that's only take the choicest bit first, okay. we don't take the uh, slightly weaker uh, wort as we call it that's been washed through. Fantastic, fantastic. So how did all of this beautiful stuff here, these are the raw ingredients, how does this represent with the rest of the, the machinery you've got here? Okay, well we have some very substantial, sophisticated cooking equipment. Yep. And if we work from left to right, the mimic screen is here to illustrate the process. Okay. And though it's live, it doesn't actually control anything. So we have silos on the left hand end here where we store our grain, our malted barley. Um, and we have a, a silo for maize and a silo for rice as well. Um, the computer system uh, calls across the ingredients dependent on the recipe and then prepares them. This is all done automatically. We have one operator controlling all of this area. Yeah. Um, and to get repeatability of product, uh, having it done by computer, make sure every batch is the same as the one before. Um, the malt is milled, which is a crushing mill rather than a grinding mill, uh, and stored in a hopper called a grist case. Yeah. Um, from there, we mix it with our own special water, and you'll find uh, brewers love to have their own language, their own jargon. Right, so yeah. we can't have anything as simple as water, we call it liquor. Okay. So we have our liquor, which yeah. comes from our own well. It's mineral water accredited, so all of our beer is brewed with mineral water. Fantastic. And before it comes into uh, the mash mixing vessel here, it's blended to the correct temperature, and we blend carefully the proportion of dry material with the amount of water. So for every kilogram of material we're adding about two and a half to three litres of water depending on the recipe. So that's our liquor to grist ratio. Fantastic. Once a lapse back into the jar. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed together the grist and the liquor uh, comes into the vessel like a kind of porridgey consist consistency and uh, it will just sit quietly in the vessel at the prearranged temperature, normally around about uh, uh, 62 to 65 degrees centigrade. And my mathematics is getting rusty, but I think that's probably about 140 odd Fahrenheit, uh, those sorts of temperature. That temperature and the time it's held there is very critical to the process and what's happening there is a process we call conversion yeah. where natural enzymes in uh, the materials are breaking down the starch into fermentable sugar and the kind of analogy I like to use there is the enzyme is like a pair of bolt cutters yeah. the starch is a huge ball of chain and the bolt cutters chop it up into sections one link is glucose, two links is maltose, three is maltotriose. Yeah. Above four, and you're starting to get unfermentable and get beyond the brewer's ability to count, so we call it a limit dextrin. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> a very complex biochemical process going on in there, uh, which again uh, is a part of where the brewer can exert his art to manipulate uh, the final character of the beer by manipulating times and temperatures ratios in the mash vessel. Once that process is completed, the next stage really is quite straightforward. It's just clarifying it. So 
great big filter, stainless steel, yeah. removing the uh, solids which we no longer want and collecting the liquids which we do want. Again, loads of brewer's jargon here, so the wort we call, sorry, the liquid we call wort, W-O-R-T, and that's what we want. Uh, the solid we call spent grain, yes. and that's uh, blown by compressed air across the silos and then sold as uh, cattle feed. So we don't waste anything, uh, but in terms of the beer it's finished with. That's, that's really good. That is very interesting indeed, just to know that whatever you get left over is sent to cattle feed, just to, just to keep things oh, yes. you know, environmentally friendly, so yep, it's, we, it's great. We waste very little. Um, this work then transfers to the last stage up here in the brew house, uh, which is where we boil it. Right. And uh, one of the reasons why uh, beer historically has been something safe to drink. So if you go back to 17th century London in the time of the plague, yes. uh, people drank beer. Uh, it may not have looked quite the same as beer does now, yeah. but it still went through a process of boiling and also an addition of hops. And the brewer adds hops as a kind of flavoring herb, uh, but it has other benefits too. And one of the key benefits is it's a bacteria side, so it will uh, give the beer natural keeping qualities. Oh, right. So basically, um, what you're saying is that if you, when you're brewing, when you're boiling a beer, and and back in the time of the um, Victorians and the plague, and even before then, I mean, Ro the Romans introduced beer to this country I think, 2,000 years ago, didn't they? They they boiled it to keep people healthy. If they were to drink the water out of a stream, they, they, they would be ill. But if they made beer out of it, it would be... It, it should still um, uh, be quite potable and um, it would have killed off things like Escherichia coli and typhus and various other nasty waterborne diseases. Um, the slight difference with the beers of Roman time is they probably didn't have hops in them. They may well have had natural um, flavouring herbs like heather and uh, uh, things they would have found locally. Yeah. But um, from memory, I think hops came in around about the 14th, 15th century, and they came across from Europe, from uh, the likes of Holland and Belgium. Fantastic. We picked it up and made better beer out of it. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the end of the process up here, and okay. we have hopped and boiled wort, which we then have to cool down um, yeah. before we add yeast to it. Because at this point it's a really sweet sugary solution with no alcohol. Cooled down again to around uh, 15, 16 degrees centigrade or colder if it's uh, a lager. Um, yeast is uh, injected in at a predetermined quantity process called pitching and then uh, the brew is allowed to ferment normally for about seven days right and during that process the yeast turns the sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide fantastic so there's a few more i think there's um what does that say on the loyal term is it that's is, is that the next thing that we go to no that's or? that's the um the brewer's name for the straining vessel in I the see. middle here so right. more jargon, I'm afraid. So. Okay, just to show a few of these things off would be good, mind. Yeah, let me... Um, that, if that's okay. Doors so you can have a look inside. So here we have a mash mixer. And uh, this is the mash mixer. Right. This is a mash mixer. Okay. Mash mixer. We might just be able to uh, see down into it. You can probably just see one of the uh, mixing blades down at the bottom there. All right. Yes, I can, yeah. Here's the great big loud to turn, is it? This is the loud to top. Loud to turn. It's a great big heavy door there. Yeah, this one is a uh, more modern uh, design, which is uh, more tamper proof. In fact, so much so it's got a lock on the back, which is electronically <laughs> interlinked with uh, the 
control system. So I have to take a key out. inside. Right, let's have a look. Go. It's all bits of green and... Is that where it all gets to? Uh, medium that's, the, grain? that's the spent grain. That's the last little bits of spent grain um, that are left in. Uh, when the vast majority has been discharged across to the silos. Right, I see, I see. And the blades that you can see hanging down in the middle yep. are what we call louter knives, and right. we use those um, to help the flow of work through the bed when we're uh, straining it off. And then they reverse direction and discharge the grain through a hole on the left-hand side. Fantastic. Fantastic, great.